Well guys, custom water cooling not only looks amazing, but also gives you up to a 20% performance increase on high-end modern hardware. However, the issue is it's super expensive. So what we have here is a fully custom build, which cost roughly 5,000 euros when it was built. And the loop itself was going close to 2,000 euros, 1,500 roughly. This unfortunately makes water cooling not available for the average person and not a good idea for the average build. Well, that was up until today because today we have a kit from Rijintech, which for 500 euros will allow you to do a custom water cooling loop on CPU and GPU. And it's a Scylla Pro kit. So I say we go ahead, take a look at it and then build a PC with it to show you guys how it's done. Now this is the kit and they make it in two versions. One with a 240 millimeters radiator, one with a 360 millimeters radiator. Now this is gonna be a CPU only loop. So what they give you is pump, reservoir, tubes, radiator, water block, fluid fittings. Everything you need aside from the water block for your graphic card. So today we also have a conversion kit for our graphic card, which is going to be a Founders Edition RTX 3090, which is the best value card out there. We've covered that in the past on the channel. I've done many budget builds with it. But what I haven't covered yet is if you water cool an RTX 3090, that thing gains a lot of performance. Like literally, I'm talking 20% overstock if you know how to overclock. Crazy good. We are kind of showing you guys how you should do it in the best case scenario. But now a good thing about the fact that they don't give you this one included is they do it because in this way you can get a custom made one for your graphic card because you don't want to buy basically a universal GPU water block because they are very bad and you want one which is optimized for your card with water flowing over the memory chips and you also want one if you have memory on the back you want one to cool the back as well and this one does it because it's a great product but this also allows you to just go ahead and buy a card which is custom water cooled out of the factory for example Gigabyte makes some MSI as well the Gigabyte is called the Water Force I think and they basically give Give you a card with the water block already installed whereas today we are doing the cheap diy route and just installing this on our 3090. now why would you consider a card with a water block out of the factory is because on the used market they are super cheap so what you could do is just buy this one and then just find a cheap 3090 already water cooled and just slap it into the loop and be happy right but today we're doing the fully diy route which is going to be the best for performance and the best for fun um, if you like this kind of thing now little disclaimer before we start i don't recommend doing in hardline water cooling to most people. It is an enthusiast thing and it's not gonna be worth your time unless you enjoy the process. So you have to be an hardware enthusiast to do this because it's not easy. Also, they make this kit with soft tubes and I do recommend it to everybody that you buy the soft tubing one. I bought the hard tubing one just because it looks better, but this is 10 times more difficult. The soft tubing one is super simple. I actually have an old graphing cooled PC in case you wanna see it. The production quality of the video was worse because we've been improving lately, but the video was decent, the content. And uh, in there we use soft tubing and it was super easy this thing is gonna be tricky okay so with that said let's go ahead and talk about the hardware that we're gonna be using so we're getting just value for money all around so we're getting a ryzen 9 1500x uh, with 30 gigabyte of 3866 ddr4 memory in 4x8 configuration should be we are using just a corsair 850 watt psu now remember if you're going water cool and you are then overclocking everything buy a better PSU because if you're running stuff on air and you're undervolting it like I show on the channel you don't need a good power supply at all but if you're going to be overclocking it very much you do need it then we're using a Lexar NVMe SSD these are good and relatively cheap which is nice and this is basically it aside from the surprise because Ryzen Tech did not only send us their custom water cooling set but they also sent us a case now let me show you what they sent us they sent us their Payan C7 case. Now, we will take a look at this very soon, but it's basically an aquarium style case and it's made with water cooling in mind. So things should actually be pretty funny. Now, the first step when building a custom water cooled PC is going to be to test your hardware before you build the actual PC. So be sure to do that, but we are not going to be doing that because I've done it off camera because I thought it would be boring for you guys. So our first step is actually going to be to get everything installed on the motherboard, CPU, RAM, SSD, etc. And then we are actually going to be installing the water block and opening up the case and and installing the hardware in the case. So I will guide you through the whole process and then it will be time to bend the tubes, which is the worst part. So I say we get started. Okay, with the whole motherboard combo ready, it is now time to look at the water cooling hardware and install the water block on the CPU. 
So 360 mil full copper radiator, fill-in thing, hardline tubing, water, water, well it's fluid actually, but uh, yeah. RGB pump and res combo, probably the best looking part of the whole thing. Fittings, now these are super heavy, I wish I could show you how heavy they are. CPU water block, fully RGB. And last but not least, Rigentech EOS 12 radiator fans. So this mounts like your standard all-in-one cooler, pretty much. They have a detailed installation manual and it's compatible with every socket in the market. And we have AM4 here today. And this is our actual water block. It's super heavy. Let me show it to you. Now this doesn't have an updated pump, so the only cable it has is an RGB cable. But uh, guys, I really cannot uh, explain it to you properly on camera, but this is just machined aluminum at its finest. It's crazy. Look at the fin stacks inside. That's where the water goes. This is crazy good engineering. Now out of the box, they give you the water block with the Intel bracket mounted, but just four screws separates you from installing the actual AMD bracket, which you will need. Everything is labeled. Then we have to go ahead, take off these black standoffs, and just mount this thing properly and then we can just mount it normally. Okay, paste application time. Now, basically, they give you some paste from Raijin Tech, and then they give you a tool to spread it, because if you're mounting a water block, you actually want a bit more paste than usual. This is one of those little things that people don't usually tell you, but they actually make quite a bit of difference um, in the overall temperature delta, because water blocks, in general, they have a much higher pressure than standard all-in-one cooling solutions, so that's the main difference. So as you can see, it's now spreading time. And it's actually her first time spreading for a Vubi, so we want to see how she does. You can rate the spreading of the paste in the comments. And this is the final result. I think she did actually great. At this point, we just slot the Vubi on top. Now, as you can see, the screws have a spring, which is what truly makes them clamp the whole thing hard. And you're supposed to hand tighten them, because if you take a look, they don't actually have a regular screwdriver head, basically. Now, obviously, you want to mount them diagonally, as you do with basically every screw. It's time to open up the case. Payan C7, let's take a look at it. Now, this is supposed to be actually really good even for air-cooled builds, so you don't have to do a custom loop in it. But before we talk too much, we have to see what it looks like. Now, it definitely feels premium, all aluminum and glass, but let's see what it looks like. Typical dual chamber aquarium design and uh, yeah, very classical at this point. And we have the dual mesh on the back, plenty of connectivity, USB-C, LED control. Now, first comment is that I really like that they made a special cutout in case you're using an M80X board. Nobody cares usually, but today we're putting a full-size ATX board and a pretty massive one for that. Okay, so with motherboard inside the case, it is now time to start planning the loop. Now, basically the first step before actually planning out the tubes is to just plug in the radiator fan and the pump res combo. So we are starting from the pump res combo and let's take a look at what they give us. Guys, this stuff is actually more premium than the things we had in the PC in the intro. This is just full aluminum and glass. Now, look at how detailed the instructions are. They even tell you the loop order, which is pretty simple, basically. Starting from the radiator, you go in the CPU water block. Then here we have the GPU in series. Then we go in the outlet of the actual pump. Then we go in the inlet of the pump and then back to the radiator. Yes, I did uh, do it in reverse, so it should be this way. They also give you a very different uh, mounting tools. You can mount it with this one on the floor, but we are actually mounting it on the side here on the radiator. So we are mounting these. So I say we go ahead. I've mounted the vertical support and we are basically gonna install it as if it was a fan, which is also why we're not gonna be able to use fans in this build. Okay, so with the pump and rest combo installed, before we put all the fittings, it is time to actually install the radiator and the fans. So let's take a look. They give you some rubber bands, which they are to stop the vibration of the fans. Screws. 
and our full copper radiator which is you can tell it's a good radiator which we are going to be mounting i was thinking exactly in this way so with the outlets very close to our actual pump res combo so this is my idea if it makes sense and it should make for some good uh, water cooling the only issue is probably going to be the tubing because we're going to be very close with the radiator and the pump res combo but uh, let's install the fans before worrying too much So the radiator has those things to protect you from vibration, but they are kind of tricky to install. Okay, radiator filled, well, metaphorically. Time to install it. Now this is always a bit tricky, but uh, thank you, thank you, you see. Sometimes you need somebody to be there for you in life. Okay, so we have connected all these fans to the controller and we are now slotting in the power supply. Okay, so at this point we have everything ready aside from the GPU. So now we have to put this water block on this Founders Edition 3090. So first off, let's take a look at the GPU and then let's take a look at the water block. Now Founders cards are so pretty. I almost feel bad for having to water cool this thing, but hey, things we have to do. So let's take a look at the water block. Now the first thing to notice is that the box is as big as the GPU. The actual water block will actually be much smaller. So now we have things to mount it, instruction set, and our tiny actual water block. Now this thing again, it is super tiny, but it's like really heavy. It's at least one kilo, crazy good. So I say we open it up and here it is in all its glory. Now we have to dismount the GPU to be able to put it into water block. And that's actually the first step shown in the instructions. Now today as a social experiment, my girlfriend is actually gonna do it. So wish her good luck. Okay, so this is our GPU, out of our GPU. She did a pretty good job so far. I only helped her uh, with removing the actual GPU. And this actually shows us why this tiny water block is we're gonna work on it, because the PCB is just that, which is super small. And this is just for dissipation. What's also crazy is this thing is gonna cool the card much more than that massive heat sink over there, just because of water, which we like, especially here at the Muslim PSU. So drop a like and a sub, guys. Okay, so at this point, it's just a matter of putting basically this into this. So step one is to actually separate separate the two sides of this. So now we take off this, which is the back piece. As you can see, much easier to just basically brush the aluminum. This back plate is not double-sided, so it's not active on two sides. And then here we have the actual front plate. So these are the pads they give you. Now the easiest way to apply these is to basically quite simply go over the machined aluminum in the actual uh, water block, not on the card, even though it might seem counterintuitive. So we just go over here where it's visible that the chips will be, and we just populate it with pads. Okay guys, so here we were ready to mount the block and they sent us the wrong block because as you can see, this is the PCB and there is just no way to make this thing fit on it. The PCB is just too much bigger of the block, like clearly there's no way of making it fit. So it's super annoying because we have issues. So if they send us a new block, we can just mount it and go ahead. If they don't send us a new block, we would basically have to mount the card back and use it air-cooled, which is gonna be pretty big inconvenience because mounting the card back a while and it's pretty annoying. So we will contact them and we will let you know. Now, now, now guys, why am I sitting with the PC with half the custom loop built behind me? Well, it's because we are actually having big issues. So I am cutting this video in two parts. So stay tuned for part two. Now let's discuss the proper issue. So as you've seen, the block just was not gonna fit on this Founders Edition RTX 3090, even though I bought this card specifically to use with that block. So now I am talking with Raijin Tech. I wanna know if like they sent me the wrong block, which could be fine, or if they listed the specification wrong, which would be a big issue actually. Um, so in part two, I will update you guys about this issue um, and then we will go on 
uh, with the building part basically because the part you've seen is we have yet to mount the tubes we have yet to fill the loop and unfortunately due to time constraints we have mounted the air cooler back on the 3090 which i didn't like uh, but we had to do it honestly i think it's gonna look nicely still but you might also see that the coolant is purple whereas it should be transparent because uh, <clears throat> well the issues don't quite end here guys we're gonna have a lot of issues in part two uh, but hopefully the build will come out fine in the end so hey stay tuned and I will put a little spoiler of one of the things that's gonna happen in part 2. So please drop a like and a sub to support me during this struggle. And I still think this is a great kit. We just were maybe a bit unlucky. So see you guys in part 2.